Thomas suddenly finds himself in the world of One Piece with the powers of a warthog Zoan. Wait a minute, is this a One Piece isekai? Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece, and today we're taking that quite literally by diving into a terrifying realm of One Piece that we have not previously examined, being fanfic. Yes, that's a dangerous word. Yes, this video is going to get weird. And yes, you should keep watching regardless because we like weird. But in case you've never used the internet before, fanfic is short for fan fiction and basically consists of taking existing worlds and characters, but writing original stories for them with a full range of creative freedom, which can be both a good thing and <laughs> a very, very bad thing. Trust me, you're not going to be prepared for the sheer mass of uh, creativity that we'll be seeing here today. Well, so I've been told because I've just been handed an assortment of One Piece fanfic to read. I'm not gonna lie, I'm slightly nervous and terrified for what's to come. And it's all going to begin with a quick round of shipping and receiving a very simple mini game, the rules of which are as follows. The first story that we'll be examining here today is going to be a romance between two of the Straw Hats, and it's going to be your job to guess who that pairing will be. Should you guess incorrectly, then your punishment will be to subscribe to the Grand Line Review, also resulting in consistent injections of One Piece culture administered straight into your YouTube feed. And if you are correct, then you will become an awkward third wheel for the ship in question. But which ship will it be? Frankie and Robin, Nami and Luffy, or Chopper and the Going Merry? The last one being quite a literal ship. But make your choice now and we shall reveal the answers in three, two, one. And bam, it is Frankie and Robin, which when shortened apparently becomes Frabin. So if you chose incorrectly, then you know the thing to do and please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet, welcome. But now to begin, our first piece is entitled After the Rain by Unseated Fourth and the synopsis is as follows. When Frankie realizes that his feelings for Robin are more than just platonic, he attempts to win her over in a series of subtle advances. Excellent, so the loudest and most flamboyant of the Straw Hats is attempting to seduce the crew's archeologist in a suave and subtle manner. What could possibly go wrong? Robin turned from the side of the ship and made her way down towards the lower deck. As she passed, she slipped him the briefest of smiles and Frankie found himself stumbling over his thoughts for moments afterwards. But one thing was clear, Robin was super. Super being the only adjective that Frankie knows, so that's actually quite in character. It wasn't that he wasn't confident in his own skills. He knew for a fact that he was super skilled, but he had to do this right. Sanji would probably be his go-to guy when it came to such things. Yes, he'd ask Sanji about it. And maybe some of the others. You look like you need to ask me about something, the cook observed. Yes, Frankie cleared his throat. You seem to know a bit about the ladies, he stated. Frankie there clearly confusing knowing a bit about ladies with knowing about bits of ladies. So do you like Robin Chan, Sanji asked, seeming marginally unsurprised. Lucky for you, I've come to trust a guy who treat my Robin Chan well. Mm, and hold. Okay, so look, this story actually has a great potential setup. I do love the idea of loud and proud Frankie being put in awkward situations and asking like of all people Sanji for dating advice, thus resulting in comical failure, but that's not quite where this story is going. Characters aren't really acting like themselves. I mean, for example, there is no universe whatsoever in which Sanji willingly embraces someone pursuing Robin or Nami or the, anyone really. It is a good opening example of fanfic in general though. However, this medium is not simply confined to such vanilla concepts as intercrew cyborg dating. So next up we have Castle by mm, Nakahara 98 and the synopsis is as follows. Vin smokes Sanchina's no damsel in distress for she was trained by Onozef who raised her as his daughter. This is the story if Sanji was a woman from the first place. All right, let's see what we've got. Inside the escorting ship of the Big Mom Pirate, Sanjina stared at the sky with empty gaze. It's been two days since she was taken by the escort to Whole Cake Island, where Big Moms and ellipsis? Her family awaits for her return. So it looks as if this one is all about retelling Whole Cake Island just from a very different angle, like a less penisy angle. And I have to say my immediate question is now that we have Sanjina, will the author also elect to gender swap pudding? Given how this has started, I think it's highly likely. Meanwhile, Sanjina retrieval team encountered the young handsome man named Pudding. <laughs> yes, I knew it. Uh, the young handsome man named Pudding who invited them to his cafe. Luffy and Chopper was busy eating the chocolates while he talks to Nami and Brooke. And this is what really annoys me about fan fiction. It's not the gender swapping, it's not characters being you know, out of character, but it's not abiding by the basic rules of the universal human language 
English. Luffy and Chopper cannot be was busy eating in the past tense whilst man putting talks in the present tense. It reminds me of something my primary school English teacher told me. She said, Liam, are you a doctor? To which I said, no, because I was 11 and clearly not a PhD candidate. But then she snapped back with, then why does every sentence of your essay sound like you're traveling through time? Which I didn't get at the time, but I later learned was a witty Doctor Who reference. Anyway, moral of the story is don't time travel within your sentences. Anyway, new story now. This is called Candy Boy by Hathany Lurie Drillor. And the synopsis is, the secret Ivankov hinted at during Impel Down. The secret a certain level six escapee wants to keep secret revealed. Oh, so that's a lot of secrets there. And I suppose that certain escapee is almost certainly going to be Crocodile, unless this is a very whack story involving Jinbei. So anyway, let's see how this begins. Awake, she was awake. She checked herself immediately. Everything was attached and far less bouncy than usual. So she assumed that everything had gone smoothly. Her clothes had exploded, but now that she thought about it, she supposed that was to be expected. She had woken up alone and covered in a frilly sheet. So at least nobody was peeking at her naked body before she had a chance to look at it. And look at it, she did. Woof. Mm, so this one is fun because it's essentially a fanfic based on the Femcroc fan theory, which I do have a video examining. I will never miss a chance to plug that one. Great, great video. But I do enjoy the idea that Crocodile wakes up after the Ivankov process, takes one look down and just goes woof. And on that animalistic note, the next story I have listed has quite the curious title. It's called Twisted Tail, except tail is rather punningly spelled T-A-I-L instead of T-A-L-E. So I'm sure that shenaniganry awaits and the synopsis is, Thomas suddenly finds himself in the world of One Piece with the powers of a warthog Zoan. Wait a minute, is this a One Piece isekai? After a very frightening sensation of being hurled across something impossibly long and impossibly deep, I next regained consciousness in an alleyway in a busy town. It is a One Piece isekai. I adjusted my glasses and sat down to read the note. To whom it may concern, you are in the One Piece world shortly before the Straw Hats arrive at Baratier. Congratulations. Now who needs to choose their words more carefully? Hmm, I added the hmm. Signed. Rob. All right, this is fun and all, but can we get to the part about the pigs? It was at that moment that I apparently triggered my devil fruit power. Uh, Thomas, are you aware that you've turned into a giant pig? Usopp asked. So I actually really like this story because it does a lot of traditionally uh, cringy stuff, like inserting original characters into the series. In fact, the name of this character is Thomas, which is clearly also the name of the author, Tomaster, but he embraces the weird nature of One Piece. I feel like a lot of authors in this situation would be uh, like, all right, I'm gonna gonna do a One Piece character and his his name's gonna be my name and he's gonna have the powers of like the blue flame Mera Mera no Mi, and he's also the fourth brother of Ace and Sabo and Luffy. And then he accidentally walks in on Nami in the shower and then he walks in on Robin also in the shower and then Boa Hancock is thirdly in the shower. You know, the kind of writing that's basically just an author wanking themselves off with a keyboard, that sort of stuff. Thomas, he gets it. He's like, I'm in the One Piece world and I'm gonna be a giant pig. It's as if it was written by Oda himself. But now things get truly bizarre because before I read the title of our next fanfic, here is the synopsis in advance. When one of the Straw Hats is accused of murder, Zoro is forced to be the attorney. That's right, the story is called Gorgon Zolo, Ace Attorney by Amaxing. My name is Roanoa Zoro. And through an odd set of circumstances, I've become a defense attorney for my friend Usopp. And I'm not gonna read anymore because it's a very clear ripoff of the first Phoenix Wright trial, but I do love that someone was somehow and for some reason inspired enough to bring this to life, even though maybe, maybe it shouldn't have been. This next one looks intriguing though. It's called Talking Blues by Chu. And apparently in an era of jazz, booze, dames, and guns, a young con man named Monkey D. Luffy leads a crew of thieves to a big heist. So this is an example of an alternate universe, which I think is some of the most fun you can have with fanfic. I love every time Oda draws short stories about the Straw Hats and other universes, so this could have a very similar sort of feel. Chapter one, the Red Head Gang. Shanks ran, one arm holding the bag of ill-gotten gains over his shoulder, the other keeping his trademark straw hat on his red head head. Red head head, I like that. Very difficult to say quickly though. Red head head, red head head, red head. Mm -hmm. 
Monkey D. Luffy was a newsboy selling papers on the corner. I'm starting to think I should be saying this with an accent actually. Like Monkey D. Luffy was a newsboy selling papers on the corner. But uh, actually <laughs> having heard that, I'm not gonna do that. He was an orphan who Shanks and the gang hadn't so much adopted, but had adopted them after Shanks had broken up some local bullies trying to get his hard won coin. You know you can't come with us, kiddo. We gotta skidoo out of town as soon as possible, unless we want the fuzz breathing down our necks. The use of cliche language is impeccable. Says who? You'll see. I'm gonna be the greatest thief that ever lived. Yeah, I'll be the thief king. All right, so I love this. This is exactly what I wanted from that synopsis. Just a dumb gangster story that doesn't take itself too seriously. With that said, it is very ambitious to what I will assume is retelling the entire story of One Piece in this gritty 20th century world. I do also really enjoy the author's notes though, which are like, next chapter, Luffy and Zoro take the fight to the boys in blue and City Hall. This is probably my favorite thing I've read all day, although it looks like just as what appears to happen with most fanfic, it had a very short lived run and only lost lasted 10 chapters. Although most of those chapters had an average of 8,000 words each, which is wild. That's something I've neglected to mention in all of this. It's neither easy nor quick to put that many words to page. In fact, the average Grand Line review video would probably run somewhere between 2,300 and 2,600 words. So it's a pretty serious effort that people put in across the board, no matter what their chosen topic is. And on that note, we now move on to Demon Tail by Era Fey. So what do we have in store for us this time? Synopsis. Used to skid as a brothel owner and Trafalgar Law is an incubus. Hilarity ensues. Uh, no. But if you'd like to see some more wild tales, then do check out this video examining how Usopp's lies have changed the entire course of One Piece. His lies are quite possibly the most powerful thing in this entire series, so I look forward to seeing you there.